Hi everyone, my name is John Doherty and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to set up WebSockets to build a real-time booking system. In today's video I'm going to be using a library called Django Channels. Django Channels makes it very easy to set up WebSockets with a pre-existing Django project and you have the ability to use it alongside a pre-existing RESTful API if that is the case. In terms of the front end today we're going to be using React for our web application and React will be subscribed to our WebSocket channel and it will be constantly listening for any messages published within that channel. And when we receive a message on this channel, it will perform some kind of front-end refresh or operation in response to the message being received. In today's video, I'm also going to be building this in the context of a healthcare application where patients can book appointments with their doctor. And the challenge that we're trying to overcome today is the scenario of two patients trying to book the exact same time slot and trying to avoid collisions in terms of booking appointments. And I'll get stuck into the code now. So in terms of what our code will actually be doing under the hood for facilitating this real-time booking system is we will be subscribing to a WebSocket channel as previously mentioned within our React web application. And when this React web application receives an update through the WebSocket channel, we are going to automatically refresh the availability of appointments. So this means when a patient is on our web application, they will always have the latest version of availability of times. So if another patient elsewhere books an appointment, the appointment will be instantaneously removed from all other users of the app at the same time. So just to kind of show you this example of uh, the kind of business case in terms of a healthcare booking system, we have two patients. They both want the same time slot at 10 o'clock and they try to perform the booking operation roughly the same time. There could be a 10, 15 second delay between the pair of them. So what we want is this logic here to occur where if patient A books the 10 o'clock slot, the API will respond with either it was successful or not. The, the RESTful API will provide a confirmation if it was successful. And then we're going to broadcast the message that the booking has been completed successfully and that there has been an update made to the, avail to the availability of that doctor in particular. So patient B is viewing the availability of the same doctor at the same time while this is all happening. Their web application, because we are using React and we're using WebSockets, it's constantly listening for any changes for the availability. So if we broadcast a message on our availability channel, the web app will pick this up instantaneously. And then upon receiving that message, we're going to perform a refresh on the front end of our web application to fetch the latest batch of available appointments for that doctor. So that means that patient B is always looking at valid booking times. So another way of tackling this kind of problem is developers will try to implement what is referred to as HTTP polling. So polling is whenever you constantly hit the same endpoint every 10 15 seconds for example the the amount of time may vary but you're constantly hitting the same endpoint uh, after a certain period of time has passed but the problem with this is that because of the time delay between each pull request to the http endpoint you essentially have a period of time where the the data provided by that endpoint is potentially stale and no longer valid as a result. So what WebSockets do is it is uh, constantly listening for any messages broadcasted on a certain channel. So with WebSockets, the connection doesn't close. It's always open and it's also full duplex. So both the web application and the server can communicate with each other at the same time. And the connection is always live, so we're always getting the latest updates in real time, which is great for this case. So that's just the kind of two ways of tackling this problem. 
in today's video we're going to be going down the web socket right and, and i'm now going to be showing you how the back end is actually looking first and then we'll go on to perform the front end logic so the code that I'm going to be going through in today's video will be available on GitHub. I will make sure to include a link in the video description. Uh, inside this repository, it contains both the front end and back end logic. In today's video, we're going to be using the Django REST framework, which probably a lot of you are already familiar with. And we're also going to be using an open source Python project called Django Channels. Django channels integrates quite nicely with the pre-existing Django project. Uh, they provide quite nice documentation as well on their website on how to get started with your own Django project. The project in this repository has already been set up, so feel free to use it as a reference if you wish. Um, in today's video, I'm also going to be covering a couple of web applications. So in today's video, I'm going to be going through the customer web app and I'm going to be going through the staff web app. This internal web app, you can feel free to ignore for the purposes of today's video. And first of all, I'm going to go through the backend logic with the Django project, and then I'm going to go on to explore the React logic that I've put together and how it all hooks together. So the main thing whenever you're setting up Django channels is to update the settings configuration for your Django project. The main thing to note when you're doing this is that you have to define this channel layers setting inside of your settings.py of your Django project. As you can see, and let me just zoom in as well, I've specified that the back end for my Django channels is a Redis channel layer, and I'm listening on the host, uh, localhost 6379. So that's just the local Redis server that I'm running with my Docker Compose. But in a production environment, this URL would obviously be different. Django Channels uh, supports a variety of backends. So you can use RabbitMQ, I believe, and you can also perform um, an in-memory uh, channel layer as well, I believe. But I think with uh, Redis, um, you know, Redis or RabbitMQ, either of them will be you know, fine for, you know, 90% of use cases. Um, after you have defined your channel layer setting, um, you can then go on to update your uh, Django server configuration. So for my Django server, I'm going to be using a thing called ASGI, which stands for Asynchronous Server Gateway Interface. And essentially what I'm saying here is that this server is going to be providing both HTTP protocol connections and WebSocket connections here as well. So I've defined, as you can see here, the, the HTTP one is, you know, getting the standard Django URLs as normal. But with this WebSocket one, we're getting these URL patterns in here. And I've defined two WebSocket URLs. So one WebSocket URL, which you can ignore for today's video, is related to getting the processing status of a salary task, which we won't be touching in today's video. But the main one we're focusing on here is the availability for a doctor's practice. So a practice is just a building patients would go to and they get seen by a doctor. So anytime the availability for a practice changes, we will broadcast a message on this channel and the patients that are using our web application in real time will get instantaneously notified. So when you're doing this with Django channels, you have to define a thing called a consumer. So this is our URL. As you can see here, part of the URL parameters is the ID of the practice. And this is the channel that we're going to be subscribing to. And this channel is handled by this consumer. So this consumer extends the JSON WebSocket consumer, which is provided with the Django channels uh, framework. Uh, this consumer is quite small and light, which is quite nice. Um, and essentially what we're saying is that whenever our React web application attempts to perform a connection through the WebSocket protocol, this is the logic that will be uh, executed. So what we're saying here is that 
when the user tries to connect, what we're going to do is we're going to get the ID of the practice from the URL parameters, which we're doing here. And then we're going to listen to the WebSocket channel practice underscore practice ID. So practice underscore and then the practice ID is where we're going to be broadcasting the updates for the changes in availability. And that's just saying that whenever a user connects, we're going to subscribe to that channel specifically. So this channel name is basically a randomly generated uh, string and each time a connection request is uh, made, this string is you know just generated on the fly and it ties the user's web application to uh, a channel that they want to uh, subscribe to essentially. So that's the kind of connection logic that we're going to be going through. And we also have the disconnect. So you can override disconnect and perform custom logic. Um, we don't need to do that for this use case in particular. And then the important thing to note is that we have declared this custom class in here called update availability. And what that is, is essentially a callback and what we're saying is that whenever we broadcast a message on this channel practice underscore practice ID, this method is essentially going to run whenever a broadcast has been made. It's going to receive an event which contains a, a message payload and we're just going to send that straight to the to the React web application. So I'll show you an example of my booking service, for example. So here I have this method called submit booking and there's a lot of dense logic in here. And uh, basically you can ignore everything above. It's just, you know, performing a booking request and checking that it's valid and then it sends a calendar invite. Uh, but the main thing to look at here is that when the booking is successful, so transaction on commit is whenever the uh, Django performs the actual um, execution on the database side for the row to be inserted inside a table essentially. So when the transaction is committed, which translates to when the booking was successful, what we're going to do is we're going to send a message and we're using the practice ID as previously mentioned the type of the event is going to be update availability and the availability object here, as you can see, it's defined inside the message. So the message is going to be availability. So this availability object is just a, you know, a custom pedantic class. Um, you know, you can broadcast whatever JSON that you want within your Django channels, but I've just provided a thin wrapper on Django channels. So you can see here that, um, I'm performing this operation where if I want to send a message that availability has updated, I send the message via this custom class that I've created. So I'm saying here's the type of the event, here's the message I'm going to be sending, and it's going to be broadcasted on practice underscore ID channel. So whenever I do this, this bit here, this part, will essentially execute and run. So whenever I send this message out the door, so update availability, the important thing to note here is that this string matches the name of the method that I've specified inside my consumer exactly. So this update availability is essentially a function call in of this consumer update availability here. So it's gonna receive the event and then send it directly to the React web application. And so that's basically how the message is being transmitted from the back end to the front end of our React web application. And then this channel name, as I previously mentioned, is just a randomly generated string that uniquely identifies a specific user session essentially. And it just, ma it just matches these two, so this ch the channel that we're broadcasting on, practice underscore ID with this user session essentially. And now I'm gonna go through how this actually 
operates on the React web application side of things. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how the front end web applications work. As I previously mentioned, I have a staff portal which staff members will use to manage the availability of appointments for doctors. And I have a customer portal, which is the application that the patients will be booking the appointments through. So what I'm going to demonstrate first is that whenever I update the availability inside my staff portal, it's going to instantaneously update the customer's data in real time and it will show the latest appointments for the patient. So if I show you, this is the staff portal and this is the customer portal. You can see that I'm trying to book an appointment right now and there's only one time slot available. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump into the staff portal and add another time slot for say three o'clock. And I'm gonna say it's a 15 minute time slot. I go ahead and I click add. So that's submitted. And now what I'm expecting is that when I jump back to the customer app, I should see the same time slot. And you can see it's coming through here now for three o'clock. And you can see that that has instantaneously updated. And my patient has the freshest, you know, availability time slots within their web application at all times. So I can also demonstrate through logs that this is working. So you can see here that I have a couple of JavaScript logs coming through. And this is the main one to note, Avail availability update triggered via WebSocket. And I can also see through my network logs that a WebSocket connection has been established and that I'm getting messages through on my WebSocket connection. So here is the data for the availability coming through that it has been updated and our three o'clock slot coming through. So that is an overview of how the web applications uh, feel as an end user. Now I'm gonna show you the logic under the hood. So within the customer web application, I have created a custom React hook, which provides a nice level of abstraction for fetching the availability of, of appointments within a specific time range and for a specific practice. I also have the ability to filter uh, available appointments on a doctor's level too, but for this, I'm just gonna be focusing at the, at the practice level. So you can see on screen, I have this hook called use booking options, and I'm passing in a couple of parameters that I previously mentioned as part of the hook. And this availability variable here is gonna constantly have the freshest version of availability because of these web sockets. So if I dig in a little deeper and see what's going on underneath the hood, I've got this use practice availability events. So this is essentially the bit that is performing the web socket connection and I'm passing in a practice ID and a callback. So I'm saying that if the availability updates for this practice in particular, I want this method to run. And I'm doing that using the JavaScript uh, WebSocket callback. So in here was part of this update callback method. I've stated that on the WebSocket on message event, I'm gonna call this method essentially. And one of the arguments of this method is gonna be an availability object. So that's the layer that's sitting on top of the WebSocket protocol. So I'm just providing the practice ID and the, the method that I want to run whenever this update event actually occurs. So if I jump back up another level here, you know, I'm providing the practice ID and here's my callback. So what I'm saying here is that whenever I receive a message on my channel, I'm going to perform a, a essentially another get request to get the latest version of availability. And uh, this will always happen whenever the availability has updated in real time. And then here is the console.log message that we previously seen as part of our Google Chrome console. 
you know, to show that the thing's actually working. So this is receiving the the event on our Django channel. It executes this method, which updates the results of availability instantaneously. And then if we bubble back up another layer uh, to the, where this hook's actually being used, this availability variable will always be in sync with our backend logic, essentially. And you can reuse this hook, you know, in other components as well within our web application quite nicely. So again, you can transmit anything on your uh, Django channels, web sockets, you know, um, it's, it's nice having as well TypeScript so that you know the types of the objects coming, you know, to and from the web socket events, but uh, the hooks provide a nice layer of abstraction and keep things simple across the code base. And yeah, that's, you know, that's the main thing for covering in terms of our uh, front end logic. And, you know, if you have any questions, you know, feel free to comment in the video description. And once again, check out the uh, GitHub repository and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks.